Welcome to this service for Monday, Thursday. Let us worship God. The opening hymn is 378, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. Now let us pray. Lord God, on this Monday Thursday, we ask for your blessing upon us, that we may worship you sincerely and meditate with reverence upon those mighty acts through which you have given us life. Almighty God, we praise and adore you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, into our world to share our life to bear our sins, to carry our sorrows. As we come to see that it is by serving that he reigns, by loving that he conquers, by suffering that he saves, and by dying that he brings life and immortality to light. We recognise our own unworthiness and weakness. We have served ourselves first and all the time. We have not sought the good of our neighbour. Grant us your pardon. We remember how our Lord Jesus washed the feet of his disciples on this day, and we ask you to cleanse us from all that is evil. Heavenly Father, hear now our prayers for others. We pray for all who call themselves Christians asking that they may be united round the holy table of our Lord. We pray for the church, that she may teach all individuals to love one another and teach all nations to live together in peace. We pray for the relief of all who suffer physical pain and all who are distressed in mind or disturbed in soul. Heavenly Father, fill our hearts with love of your Son. Keep us in fellowship with all your saints on earth and in heaven. We pray through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you, O Father, and the Holy Spirit, be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. This evening we have two readings, one from the Bible, but before that a reading from a book called Stages on the Way, concerned about stages on Jesus' way to the cross. Tonight I read the passage that is appropriate for Monday Thursday, asking the worth of Jesus. It reads as follows. 
It was on the Thursday that he became valuable. He hadn't anything to sell, not since leaving his hammer and saw three years earlier. Needless to say, he could knock together a set of trestles or hang a couple of shelves at the drop of a hat. No bother at all. But he wasn't into making things, not now. He was into, well, talking, I suppose, and listening and healing and forgiving and encouraging, all the things for which there's no pay and the job centre has no advertisements. So his work wasn't worth much, nor indeed was he. For not being well-dressed or well-heeled or well-connected, he wouldn't have attracted many ticket holders had he been put up for a raffle. But he had a novelty value, like the elephant man or the fat lady or the midget at the circus. Put him on a stage and he might be interesting to look at. Sell him to the circus with the promise of some tricks, and there could be a silver penny or two or thirty in it. It was on the Thursday that he became valuable. Our Bible lesson tonight comes from John's Gospel, chapter 15, where we read the first eight verses. It is Jesus who is speaking. I am the true vine, and my father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit he trims clean, so that it will be even more fruitful. You are already clean because of the word I have spoken to you. Remain in me, and I will remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, He is like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up, thrown into the fire and burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be given you. This is my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. Amen. Our next hymn is number 374, From Heaven You Came, Helpless Babe. From heaven you came, helpless babe, entered our Yeah. 
Our text tonight comes from John's Gospel, chapter 15 at verse 5, where Jesus said, I am the vine and you the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. You may think that this is a strange text for a Monday Thursday service. Well, let's put it this way. You may have been thinking that you would get something about the Garden of Gethsemane or the Last Supper, But in fact, this belongs in the Last Supper account given by John. In the first three Gospels, Matthew, Mark and Luke, we get the actual account of what happened at the table. John's Gospel is a bit different. It gives us the washing of the disciples' feet, which preceded the meal. And then it gives us a long discourse, a conversation that Jesus had with his disciples, but still at the table after the meal. It included teaching, and it included a lengthy prayer. It's in this teaching that we find the words, I am the vine, and you the branches. You may still not be satisfied. You may say, well, this is teaching that could have been given at any time. But I would argue that it is appropriate for the night before Jesus died. But you see, on the table, in front of Jesus and his disciples, would be four cups cups of wine. They would represent four of God's great promises to the children of Israel before they fled from Egypt. If you want to check up, you will find these promises in the book of Exodus, chapter 6, verses 6 and 7. In each cup would be roughly half a pint of wine. And you may be interested to know that the wine was diluted with water, three portions of wine to two of water. So Jesus would see in front of him these cups with the wine in it. Maybe the wine had been drunk by this time. But you can understand Jesus' train of thought. The wine would lead him on to think of the grapes which produced the wine and then the vine on which the grapes grew. So Jesus said, I am the vine. But the association is even more appropriate. In chapter 15 of John's Gospel, After the section which we read earlier, Jesus went on to say to his disciples, Greater love has no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends. 
Quite clearly, Jesus was speaking there about his own death, a death that was to take place the next day, the day we know as Good Friday. And he was explaining to his disciples that what lay behind his impending death was love. It was love for the disciples that led Jesus to his death on the cross. And he saw his relationship with them as being one of friendship. Believe it or not, we actually have something pretty similar in the first three Gospels in their account of what happened in the meal. For they tell us that Jesus lifted a cup of wine and he said, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood. In referring to his blood, Jesus was speaking also of his death, which was to take place the next day. His blood would be shed as he hung on the cross. And he was indicating that the purpose of his death was to create a new covenant. What is a covenant? It's a relationship between two people or two groups of people. In this case, it's a relationship between God and his people. In John's Gospel, where Jesus said, Greater love hath no man than this, that he lay down his life for his friends, you are my friends. Jesus is there describing that relationship in terms of friendship. And that ties in with the talk of the new covenant. For the new relationship which God has set up between us and himself is one of love and one of friendship. And so it's appropriate that Jesus reminds us of that love and friendship. And it's something that we should take to heart on this Monday, Thursday evening. But how about these actual words, I am the vine and you the branches. If a man remains in me and I remain in him, he bears much fruit. How do they relate to communion? Well, they do. Because Jesus, one of the ways in which we remain in Jesus is that we celebrate communion. And Jesus also referred to future celebrations of the Lord's Supper when he held the last meal with his disciples. If we go back to the words, this cup is the new covenant sealed by my blood, Jesus went on to say, whenever you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. Although he was celebrating that last and final meal with his disciples, he was also looking ahead to a time when his disciples would continue to celebrate a similar meal, even when he was physically absent. Looking ahead to a time like our own, 2,000 years later, when followers of Jesus would celebrate communion in church. And so it is by participating in this sacrament that we abide in Jesus. There are, of course, other ways of abiding in him too. Generally speaking, the worship of the church and our private devotions in reading the Bible and in prayer, they too assist us to remain in Jesus. And so if we use these means of abiding in Jesus, we bear much fruit. What is the fruit that we bear? It is love. As the Father loved Jesus, so he loved his disciples, and he urged them to continue in his love. We continue in Jesus' love by going forth to our ordinary lives in the world, displaying love in all our behavior. That is the fruit that is expected of us. And Jesus said, by this shall all men know that you are my disciples. It is by our love. It is not by our doctrine. Sometimes Christians argue, and some believe one thing and some believe another, and they will say that some are right and others are wrong. They are orthodox, the others are heretics. That is all relatively unimportant. The way people will know that we are disciples is by our love. And if we are displaying that love, it is clear that we are abiding in the vine and we remain with Jesus. But Jesus also spoke of branches in the vine that were fruitless. They didn't bear any fruit. 
and they were to be cut off and burned. It is true of any vine that there are branches which bear no fruit. They grow very quickly and they sap the strength of the vine with the result that the branches that do bear fruit bear them in lesser quantities or lesser quality. So they need to be cut off. In Palestine, the pruning of the vine is done in December and January. So this really speaks to us of judgment. And it's not something we're entirely comfortable with. So let's view it only from the positive side. If we abide in Jesus and he in us, then we remain part of the vine and we bear the fruit that he wants. So let's take to heart the message of Monday Thursday as it is given to us in the 15th chapter of John's Gospel. Jesus is the vine and we are the branches. We abide in him by continuing to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, by engaging in the worship of the church and in our private devotions. And by abiding in him, we are able to bear the fruit of love, the love that reflects the divine love that Jesus showed when he died for us in the cross. So let's ensure that love is the hallmark of our Christian living. Amen. We now sing the communion hymn, which is 668, according to thy gracious word. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. It was on this evening long ago that Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, holding the Last Supper with his disciples. St Paul describes it in this way. On the night of his arrest, Jesus took bread, and after giving, giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink from it, do this in remembrance of me. Tonight, we seek to remember Jesus. And as he took bread and wine, so I do the same 
And as he gave thanks and praise to God, we present to God our prayers of thanksgiving. Let us pray. Gracious God and loving Father, we praise and thank you at all times because we have been created and preserved by you, loved and cherished by you, fed and nourished by you, taught and guided by you. But now we praise you especially for Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who on this night instituted this holy sacrament to be a pledge of his love and a memorial of his passion. Humbly and also gratefully, we remember his sufferings, his agony in the Garden of Gethsemane, his cruel scourging, his crown of thorns, his carrying of the cross, his crucifixion and death on Calvary. With all our hearts, we thank you for arranging this costly salvation for us and for making it complete by raising our Lord Jesus from death to life. We pray now, Lord, that you may send us your Holy Spirit so that as we break this bread, it may be for us a means of sharing in the body of Christ. And as we drink from the cup, it may be for us a means of sharing in the blood of Christ. So grant that as we partake of these elements, we may be drawn closer to Christ, our once crucified, but now risen Lord. And as we ask you to consecrate these elements through the influence of your Spirit, so we also ask you to consecrate ourselves. Graciously accept us as we dedicate ourselves and you to your service. We ask you to fulfil through us your great purposes of love. Hear us now as we pray in the words which Jesus taught his disciples of old, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory for ever. Amen. According to the example and command of our Lord Jesus Christ, and in remembrance of him, we do this. On the night in which he was being delivered into the hands of his enemies, Jesus took bread. And after giving thanks to God, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. In the same way, at the end of the meal, he took the cup and said, This cup is the new covenant, sealed by my blood. Whenever you drink it, do this in remembrance of me. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy upon us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Take this and eat it. This is the body of Christ which is broken for you. Do this remembering him. As I eat bread, I invite you to do the same. This cup is the new covenant, sealed by Christ's blood, which was shed that the sins of many might be forgiven. Drink from it, all of you. As I drink wine, I invite you to do the same. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us again pray. 
O God our Father, we are grateful that you have given us this opportunity to celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, commemorating the last meal which Jesus held with his disciples in the upper room before he died. We are grateful that this meal pointed the disciples forward to the cross and points us back to the same event. We give thanks that out of love for you, his Father, and for all the world, Jesus humbled himself and was obedient even to the point of death, death on a cross. Grant that our experience in this service may inspire us to similar obedience to your commands. We remember that on the cross, lifted up from the earth, Jesus draws everyone to himself and makes the cross of shame a cross of glory. Fill us with enthusiasm for our faith that we may witness to Jesus and his great love. It is in his name that we pray. Amen. Our closing hymn tonight is 562, Through the Love of God Our Saviour. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding and deserving, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with each one of you this night and forevermore. Amen.